to explain, explain in, in some detail multi-axis turning. And this is all using Bob Dill's mythology of quadrants, which if you start reading any of her articles, it gets very confusing very, very fast. And what I'm going to attempt to do is just take one and pass it Demystify. Demystify or simplify. Basically, she started doing multi-axis turning in 1996, and then in 2006 she said, I'm getting nowhere with this, and she started this detailed study of what she calls the quadrant system. What system? Quadrant. quadrant. There, there are basically four quadrants. There are only two, there are only, there are two types of axes, and two types of, of cross sections. The cross sections will fall into an arc, and you get arcs when you are turning air wood. You get circles when you are turning solid wood. Okay? There are also two ways to turn the wood on the lathe. Either a parallel axis, where the axis does not go through the center of the wood. That's a parallel axis right there. And you see the air, you see the air wood on the side? And you see the solid wood in the middle. Depending on where those axes are, you get different results. Then there's what we call the twisted axis. I've been called that. <laughs> and the twisted axis goes through the center of the wood somewhere. And then you start getting results like this. You notice the air wood is bigger out here than it is here. And that also gives you different results. So you're in the center of the headstock. Center. Then there's a third one, which is also comes under the twisted axis. And you can go axis one to axis two. And then you get a completely different profile. All the air wood is on the outside, solid wood is in the center. So looking at your sheet, we're going to look at an arc type where you're only turning air wood, and the axes are parallel. In other words, the axis does not, the secondary axis does not go through your center axis. So the two axes are parallel to one another. And depending on what you do, you can get a shape like that. And this is just beads and cones. It takes nothing away from elementary wood turning. You have four basic types of cuts. You have a bead, a cove, a V-cut, where you go right into the wood, or a flat cut where you can turn circular outcomes. But that's just two axes, two parallel axes. Then you can get to three parallel axes and make little boxes like this. Again, that's your outcome. This is a very difficult piece to turn to get all these you have all these exactly the same. It's, it's a good practice for tool control because this has to be straight across and you have to get, you have to lay out your axes very, very carefully, 120 degrees. So that, that's basically quadrant one. Quadrant two, and she also admits, I'm sorry, quadrant three is also not very exciting. 
this is parallel axes. I like it's cam shot. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's parallel axes and it's circular outcomes. In other words, it's circular outcomes and you're also, you must keep your secondary axis close to your primary axis, your center axis. Otherwise, you will not get this outcome. The wood will get so small that it will crack. Because if you have, if it's way out there, you have to go a long way in before you start getting solid cuts all the way around. So keep your axes close to the center and then you can start getting circular, you can get these circular outcomes. And they're circular outcomes because if you cut cross sections of any of those, you're going to find they're circles. They're not arcs. And you can do things like make, you know, basically beads, you can make coves. You can do a variety of things. Put it in your car. Put it in your car, whatever, yeah. <laughs> The most interesting axis is axis number two. And that's what we call the twisted axis. And the arc type, you can get things like this, where you have three axes again. I made a goblet like that, a whole you, goblet. You can make goblets like this. Swirling up. Tw twisted axis. Now, depending on the size of the wood, if you go short and squat, you can get these interesting little things. You can make candles out of this. You can make a, a little box out of this if you put a different type of top on. So depending on the wood, you can get, or the shape of the wood, you can get different outcomes as well. Is it the length and the width or just the length? Yes. Length and width. Length and, length and width. You can get different outcomes as well. Question? Yes. What about larger diameters? Those are diameters like an inch and a half or two inches. What about you, larger diameters? Larger diameters. And three or four I'll, inches, say. Yeah, I'll, I'll show those in her book. Okay. Uh, you can get very bizarre stuff. You can get anything from functional, like candlestick holders and maybe little boxes, to what the hell is it? You know, complete <laughs> art. You know, I do a lot of that. Yeah, I do a lot of that. right. You can do a lot of that. Also, I wish I knew everything I turned. Also, with the tw <laughs> twisted axes, you can start making figures like this. You can start no, make is. you can start making human figures or representations of human figures. That's neat. So, and again, this is a variety of. This was turned on a center axis. Then you went off axis, off axis, and here you have circular outcomes, and here you have archetype outcomes. So you get these combinations. And then the fourth quadrant, twisted axes, 